aware of the possible problems sure. that uh, that we have to constantly be you know reshaping ourselves so where we're at right now is we have, have an international society that has been you know basically in it, it started in its infancy infancy in 2007 and then over the course of the last decade has really uh, grown in terms of membership but also influence and uh, you know presentations in you know major medical societies where we've had uh, a number of major publications in the last few years that we were intimately involved in so you know we feel like we're just now starting to to get some ground uh, but then we we still have a problem with making ourselves known number one and number two you know ensuring uh, reliable membership and and really uh, solidifying the connections with all the people around the world that that we have connections with and uh, the way that we've been in the last few years the way that we've best made those connections has been our global summit which as you know this year will be in London uh, last year was in Vancouver and the year before that was in was in Nashville and then next year it's going to be in Tampa with Eric so you know we've we've tried to spread the love of of the uh, responsibilities but also to really give each area a place to you know sort of show their stuff and also make it known to the international community that you know this place is is really paying attention to this to this topic so now dan you did uh, a lot of traveling this year didn't you yes you went to a lot of the uh, other so, chapters right yes so i've been to just in 2017 I've been to a number of places that are wanting to establish their own chapter and you know we have to come up with a reliable mechanism to have an international society that has you know a meaningful connection to to various chapters so just in 2017 I've been to uh, Cape Town uh, South Africa, been to several places in the United States. Uh, the ACC hosted a uh, workshop. The ACC is the American College of Cardiology, and that is, it's it's the world's largest collection of cardiologists, uh, or it's close to the European group. But uh, and they are sort of I wouldn't call it a governing body but it's certainly our professional association for all the cardiologists in the United States and North America and anyway they hosted a cardio oncology workshop that was the highest attended workshop of any ACC meeting this year and uh, so we feel like the level of interest is super high and then we were uh, you know the International Cardio Oncology Society was responsible for the agenda and all the basically all the faculty that were there were were active members of ICOS and then uh, also just came back from Israel and Mexico City uh, both of those places have already organized a cardio oncology meeting and uh, uh, have already established that they are you know international chapters that want to be part of our global organization uh, I've been to Brazil in the past year or so and they are also ready as our Argentina and uh, of course the UK is already an integral part of our group they're they're hosting the meeting in September uh, but we also have very strong connections with Spain and Italy and Portugal and trying to get a better connection with Germany and uh, and of course Canada we have uh, uh, Susan Dent is an, an essential part of our leadership and she you know she's from Canada so she's been uh, uh, critical in all of our uh, connections across the, across the world really and so Susan's been to uh, uh, China, if, to if I, in China 
she's yeah she's been to india and china representing icos and trying to establish chapters there so it really is an an international and world truly worldwide uh, entity and we're just trying to solidify our connections in all these places and then we've got Poland and, uh, too, right Poland Poland yeah they were already firmly established years ago so I haven't included them in our conversation but yeah they're they were already uh, they were our first international chapter outside of Italy and the US and they they have a journal that they want to make it one of the journals of ICOS. They want to uh, yes. want us to uh, bless their journal as being a, an ICOS journal, and we could have absolutely that, <laughs> that could be a membership. Uh, one of the membership uh, bonuses is you get that journal, which I think uh, <laughs> has a lot to do with uh, government sponsorship. Uh, the journal is really well done. The paper and the color printing is uh, unbelievable. They have an English edition and a Polish edition. And uh, additionally, you know, we, d we did start a journal called Cardio Oncology two years ago, and that is three papers away from being PubMed certified, which is, uh, you know, a big, a big moment in any kind of journal because then it's searchable by all the PubMed uh, listings around the world. So that journal is very close to that milestone and uh, so we're excited about that too but i think our big our biggest challenge right now is that we need to build an infrastructure that is reliable in the way that we interact with chapters and then is reliable in the way that we interact with providers in our specific areas. So for us in the US, we want to be able to interact very effectively with them. And, uh, you know, in essence, we, we learn from each other. So having, uh, having ways in which we communicate very effectively is, is a critical step. And then, of course, we feel like a website, uh, you know, a very active website is, is the best way to do that right now. So we, we need to build a website. Uh, an effective and reliable website and then uh, you know I think that we 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 really need some other infrastructure we need to have you know a reliable governance system so we can explain it on our website you know we can say that you know we have this many members and we have you know X number of people that are making sure that we're you know, doing uh, productive things with with our uh, membership m monies, and and so we need to define all of that. And so, in that sense, you know, we're especially happy that you're interested in that possible option because I would say we would certainly want you to be one of our executive board members so that we we can, you know, utilize your really your international expertise to to help us figure out how do we how do we navigate all these different territories and then other other things that we're exploring are much more medically related but certainly uh, you know establishing a, a registry of medical information across all of the countries to, to us is by far the most scientifically important thing that we could do and uh, you know that's it's going to take some work and but I, I think that we got a lot of really good members that have that are doing these things individually but we need to get everybody together on the same page so well, it Eric, sounds like an interesting challenge yeah interesting challenge for sure <laughs> and i think you know eric has really been our uh main hub for for all of these you know ways in which we interact with the world and I think that you know I've leaned very heavily on Eric in terms of trying to figure out how we do these things the the place that you know I'm most comfortable in is is much much more focused on the medical side of things you know how do we treat patients and th that kind of stuff I'm not 
as savvy as Eric is about making connections across boundaries. So, so. Dan, tell, tell us about your uh, your new uh, move to St. Louis and what uh, what's going on with that. Yeah, so I've been at Vanderbilt for eight years, which is, as you know, in Nashville, uh, which is a great city. But uh, I have accepted a, a new position at Wash, Wash U in St. Louis, which is to start a cardio-oncology program at that institution. Now, Wash U is a pretty big place, and it has a really uh, prominent oncology section or division, uh, but they don't have any real connection to cardiology. And the chief of cardiology really wanted to build that connection, mainly because uh, it's very apparent that we need to support these patients that are undergoing treatment in a much better fashion than we currently are. So uh, I see this as a, a big challenge, but I also see it as a microcosm of how we're going to connect to the world in general. Uh, we got to figure out how cardiologists, especially those that are interested in cardio-oncology, interact with oncologists, not only in St. Louis or in Nashville, but really everywhere. And how can we do that most effectively? And uh, so I think that my challenge at Wash U is certainly important for, you know, St. Louis or Wash U in particular, but really I think it's a, it's an example of what we're going to have to do everywhere. And uh, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. That's starting in September. So well, that's very exciting, Dan. And there's been a real proliferation of programs in the universities, but we haven't seen the same thing in private practice. And so a lot of people are underserved. And so I've tried uh, to start that. Of course, I've got my private practice. I think there's one in Virginia. And then we went to HCA, you and I did, and we didn't have much luck with the senior leadership, medical leadership of HCA. But then uh, looking at the grassroots, I was able to uh, get a, for the first program in HCA started, by uh, Dr. Jim Post uh, at HCA, uh, I think it's uh, a hospital there in Pinellas County that's called Palms of Pasadena. And so the oncologist and the cardiologist are in the same building. And so that should be a match. And so we think that uh, that's going to go well. And we have HCA support of the first private cardiology oncology practice of 169 hospitals and they don't even have a program there in nashville which is their headquarters right dan no actually so you know without going boring you about political details in medicine which would be quite boring the uh the way nashville is is that hca owns a very large hospital that does most of the mo the majority of what's done in the hospital are, are two things, you know, it's cardiology and oncology, basically. And they have a very big oncology program. And then, of course, Vanderbilt is less than a mile away from that hospital. And at Vanderbilt, we have a very large cardiology section. The oncology is not quite as big, uh, especially if you compare it to Centennial or the HCA hospital. So, you know, here you have these really big entities and they they really cannot talk to each other. It's it's sort of like some bizarre thing. But, you know, well, you're quick right. Quick question yeah. about that, Dan. Um, so you would have to, I would guess, evangelize to both those um, specialties. And, uh, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. And I, you know, you chose the word evangelize. I think that's certainly <laughs> it was certainly a good word to choose because that's that's pretty much what it is. I mean, you have to try to get them to see the picture, and if they are just really not willing to look at the picture, then uh, you know you're kind of you know just wasting your breath. And I think that uh, certainly in the world of patients being treated for cancer it is not limited to only academic centers by, by any means. So, you know, there's a ton of patients that are getting cancer therapy in 
private practice settings. And if we're not serving those patients at all, then I, we're, we're really missing the boat bad. And, you know, I think it's great from, a, from an academic point of view to say we're doing all these great things at Vanderbilt per se, which is nice for the patients that come to Vanderbilt. But, you know, in the city of Nashville, if 60% of the patients aren't even coming to Vanderbilt, they're going to these other hospitals, then, you know, we're not even meeting half of the population, really. So I think what Eric's talking about is, is our really our next frontier is to, to get our message out to a much broader population, even in the United States. And so, uh, so they have a question. Go ahead, Boyd. Excuse me. No, just real quickly. Um, it sounds to me like you're making some inroads to teaching hospitals, where um, you know med students should be getting this this information earlier than later. Um, is that the case? Are are we making any head headway into that arena? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and part of it is is because you know not that all of cardiology is 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 uh, uh mundane or or not interesting but without a doubt the the interest level of cardio oncology issues is super high and i would say it's much higher than even you know sort of routine stenting for example in in coronary disease you know that's been around for a long time and you know people are kind of tired of talking about the different kind of stents and what whatever, you know, so there's a thousand different yeah. stents and a thousand different ways of putting them in. And, uh, you know, it's just not all that interesting. I think that at the, certainly at the medical student level or the medical resident level, uh, and then fellow level, there's just a high level of interest in these issues because yeah. the patient, I mean, for a lot of reasons, but you know, the patients are really, you know, they're, searching for help that's number one number two is the conditions are complex and very interesting and then the drugs are everything is new there are all kinds of new developments of drugs and you don't know what happens with those drugs you have to kind of figure it out so you got to be you know a careful investigator for every patient that you see right and obviously no Double-blind studies done in, on this to, to a great degree, I would guess. Uh, yeah, because there's, there are so many. Movies. Right, and and you know they're they're unique situations. Now there there are starting to be you know bigger studies and you know with that specifically address some certain common question, but you know in your average day of cardio oncology you encounter 50 questions that you don't really have a lot of evidence to tell you what to do. You've got to put pieces together and, and be, you know, be careful in your approach. And then, you know, you make your best educated guess. And uh, uh, I mean, I hate to say that out loud, but that's the truth. So Eric, I don't know if you have any comment about that. But. Yeah, we're doing a, a webinar once a month, uh, Boyd, that, uh, helps uh, us to communicate together with about 35 doctors that frequently come on together. And uh, usually one of the cardiac fellows, who's a, a fellow in cardio-oncology, which is an extra year, will come on and present a case. And we've got, we've got uh, it's international in that basically it's somebody from Poland or somebody from Israel will be presenting a case or Argentina or Mexico or China and it's uh, a nice little meeting place because uh, actually one of the fellows uh, was on from China and uh, basically uh, Dr. Alex Lyons was uh, looking for a fellow for cardio-oncology and there may be a match there. And so it's a, it's a meeting place uh, that's been an exchange of information of uh, something that there's not a lot of information on what to do. And so just these anecdotal cases has been very important to me to acquire the knowledge to become uh, well-versed in cardio-oncology. And then my role is basically cardiac imaging. And so we want to bring everybody up to that level of imaging. And they've got a long way to go because we haven't found any comparable images to what I've been showing uh, until we 
heard from uh, Alex there and some of the stuff he has at the Brompton, uh, which they showed some really good MRIs. And so, uh, so we're, we're having trouble. We have to bring everybody in this country up on imaging and cardio oncology is a big, big piece of that. Well, that's what piqued my interest uh, in getting the results that I got after being imaged by you, doctor. Yes. Um, I don't know that I mentioned this before, but one of my very close friends is a fellow by the name of Robert Braithwaite. And he is the CEO of all of the Hogue hospitals here in Orange County. And before I leave uh, for Africa, which is coming up pretty quickly, uh, you know, given that you, you would want this kind of thing, I would love to bounce this kind of thing off, Bob, and, um, and even see whether or not there might be a time where we could get together, get together on a, in a similar way on a webinar with him. Just take a half an hour or so and give him an overview of what you're trying to accomplish. One of the frustrations I think that Dr. Rothfield had is here we are in Southern Orange County where we have excellent doctors, we have excellent hospitals, but he's taking me to Tampa to get the latest imaging possible, which is a real shame. Yeah, what's his name um, again for me, for me, uh, Boyd? It's Robert Braithwaite, B A B R A I T H. W A I T E, and if you look him up, you'll see that he is the CEO of of Hogue here in and, uh, and the hospitals are called Hogue H O G E H O A G H O A G and so uh, basically right. do you, have some information I could have, so, you have some contact information I could have so and maybe you could ask him to uh, expect a call from me. You yeah, absolutely. I absolutely can get that for you. Yeah, well, um, you just, uh, but I'll email that to you. Yeah, email that to me. I really appreciate it. If you give me his cell phone or an email address, I'd appreciate it. And then I'll, I'll give him a heads up that, that you might be calling. Oh, that would be wonderful. I will be calling. That would be wonderful. I really appreciate that. We don't, we don't. Yeah, and I, I think, good man. yeah, I would be, uh, you know, more than happy to, you know, do a similar webinar thing. And, you know, if we, we could uh, just have you know five or six slide presentation just so that he has something to look at and uh, you know kind of go over the high level issues. But uh, you know I think that right now we just feel like the the whole uh, environment is so wide open and that. It really is. Everybody is, you know, clamoring for assistance, and I think we would love to be able to provide some of that at least. And uh, you know, one way in which we, well, we we have a number of ways that we're trying to do that. So I think that uh, any any way in which somebody like your your friend that you're talking about, you know, he obviously has a perspective of being the CEO of multiple hospitals so he knows how well each other and and you exactly. know that that kind of perspective is it's important to understand where the where the barriers are and how, how do we get past those and uh, you know I think that we're we're looking at all ways in which we can overcome those things yeah you know a, a hundred ideas have come into my mind and I won't I won't bore you with them but Obviously, as you look at this, I, I, sensed, uh, I sensed startup in a lot of ways, you know, gathering your, your market, putting, getting those lists together, getting the various areas that you need to focus on, be they, you know, teaching hospitals, hospitals themselves, uh, even government entities and social, social medical uh, countries where they might have a minister of ministry of medicine, all those kinds of things where we might be able to take a top-down approach. But I think the most exciting thing that I get juiced up about is, is how do we create technology that puts this in front of them um, in, a, in a palatable but exciting and you know, useful way. And I think that will be the challenge, uh, is getting folks up to speed you know, across the world and getting to as many people as you can. I, that's, that's an exciting challenge uh, that I see. And um, it's going to take some horsepower and some, some real thought. But um, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. 
I have a good friend who um, has done a ton of fundraising. She she built uh, an aquarium in Utah, of all places, by, by raising about fifty million dollars. That's and, an outstanding uh, place. Uh, uh, I've been there with my grandchildren. It's an outstanding uh, place where there's nothing in the way of fish. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, isn't that fun? Yeah. So fun. anyway, that that was built by my old high school girlfriend. <laughs> oh, she did a great job. Man, you had you had some good high school girlfriends. She's a great kid. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I she's the kind of person I don't know that she would be it uh, or. Or I, I hear great things about this son of a of a medical doctor here locally to me. So obviously we're going to need the right, or you're going to need the right people that are really really uh, excited about this and are willing to, you know, just see the vision that you you all have and execute on that vision, and then ha have people helping him or her, them to um, to exact the the vision out in the world and it's just <laughs> very exciting and I would love I would love to be in on meetings that just as a either a sounding board or maybe a suggestion here or there as you write the bylaws if you will of this this uh, of this effort and um, and again I see it as is something that as you as you start to commingle this vast expertise that you all have um, we need to put sort of a business slant to it as well, where we really go to market hot and effectively. So those are just a few impressions that I've had as we've talked a little bit today. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I would say, yeah, I'm, for me in particular, I, I would say I'm begging for that kind of influence because, you know, I pretty much uh, have, you know, been straight down the pipeline as far as medical stuff stuff you know I just went to medical school and did my residency and you know whatever so that's it I don't know much else and uh, I thought you uh, I think soccer. people well I did I do know that or I used to <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that's the other thing Boyd is that you know if you're gonna be in London then you know make sure you stay over until Saturday I hope you are but uh there's a Premier League game that we're going to go to, so we'd love to have you come. Well, I'll have to change my flight, which I can do. It's not a problem. Um, it's Saturday. Uh, Saturday the 23rd is uh, – it'll probably be like, like in the mid-afternoon, but the, the uh, Tottenham is playing West Ham in, uh, in London, and so we gotta, we got to get some tickets, and we will. That's excellent. Well, I love soccer. My kids have all played, and I've coached, so uh, I would be. Oh, a, I would man, be you can't well. pass that one up. No, can't pass that one up. No. So I'll uh, I'll get online with Virgin Atlantic and uh, and get that ticket ex uh, put back to Sunday probably. Because I was going to leave on the twenty third Saturday. Yeah. Now you can't do that. Okay. So uh, Dan, do you okay. want to address uh, the financial issues in terms of? Uh, what do you expect to gain in terms of the meeting financially? What kind of funds will we bring in from uh, our sponsors and so forth that would be distributed to ICOs? Yeah, I think so. That's a, that's a moving target partly because, you know, we continue to have efforts to raise more money and we will continue to do that until the day we start the conference probably um, so but right now it looks like given everything and all the expenses that we envision as part of the meeting is that we will probably come out with a few nickels left at the end so I think right now we've covered our costs and if we uh, can get some more money in the meantime then you know whatever whatever that amount is you know will be split between BCOS which is the British Cardio Oncology Society and then ICOS which is the International Cardio Oncology Society so right now I'd say we're gonna split maybe two nickels uh, but if we uh, keep uh, keep our efforts going and uh, you know we have some promising leads in the last uh, you know month or so that we that we have 
that uh, hopefully whatever that is, is money that we would ultimately be able to split. And who is, who is um, spearheading that, those fundraising efforts for you now? Well, Alex Lyon is, is doing the, the majority of that because, you know, he's hosting the meeting in, in London. Uh, but then, of okay. course, I'm I'm doing that as well, and and others. But uh, you know, we have uh, a number of people that are on the organizing committee of the the summit that are all trying to enhance their contacts and and get sponsors from different sources. Gotcha, gotcha. So, okay, that's that's good. I, that answered my question. Okay. Not and I think that in the past, what we have done for this meeting, we keep trying to end up with, you know, some sort of profit at the end of the meeting so that we can use that to organize the next year's meeting. And uh, for the most part, we've covered our expenses really since the beginning. We've been able to cover pretty much all of our expenses each year, but sometimes it doesn't it doesn't get that way until right before the meeting. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're, right. we're certainly on a shoestring most of the time. Uh, but I think that if we keep working to get our systems better, then hopefully we would actually have some sort of profit at the end of a meeting so that it would carry on to the next meeting. Right. And you see most of your revenues coming from uh, these summits. Yeah, we, we, uh, Eric had set up a uh, membership pay portal in the past, like about two years ago, and we were getting some money that way, uh, and it seemed like it was working, and then, then that sort of fell apart. So right now, we don't have a way of doing that, and uh, so we really need to build our website properly, and uh, you know, then we also need to get our members to pay for their membership each year. That's a, another sort of struggle, but, but I think that we will do it because the, the members that we have are very committed and they, you know, they may not have committed so much with their money in the, the last year or so, but they've certainly con committed with their effort. And, uh, uh, you know, if we ask them to commit with money, they will, they will do it, I'm sure. But right now we don't have a mechanism to do it. Yeah, the website uh, basically is down, and we were counting uh, on our volunteer and our volunteer because of financial uh, restraints and uh, having a young family had built things up, and then it sort of froze because he basically went into the commercial business and couldn't stay to help us. And then we thought we would get help from Canada, and the idea was that we would split cost with uh, funding someone in Canada and uh, we did split cost, but we really didn't get anything for our money. She basically did a great job on the G-Coast, and I think we were funding the G-Coast, really, in, in terms of importance. And she was in Canada, so we didn't have uh, you know, her down the hall in the office. And so it wasn't like when I had John Fay here as a volunteer, and he would stop in every day and have coffee, and we could keep that going. And so we need to some, somehow get it straightened out. It's like... A chicken and the egg and so basically we, we can't we can't get the funding we can't excuse me we can't collect the funding because uh we don't have somebody to do it and we don't have somebody to do it because we can't collect the funding so so we're sent we kind of need a, a grant or something where we can and the last grant we had was from gcos vancouver and we put that into gcos London. And so that's where we are, sort of uh, hand to mouth, you might say. So Dan and I have come up with, we pay her once in a while. And uh, so we're going to, he and I are together going to contribute to funding the website. And so, and then we had, uh, we had uh, a gentleman here in Tampa who I took care of and who was feeling really nice about that as, as a concierge patient. And so he, uh, put some money in, but he earmarked it for training students. And so we were able to use that for Dr. Tariq, Hassan Tariq, who basically was a, a young man who didn't match uh, on, his, uh, as on his residency, and he was just decimated. 
and he had like $250,000 in med school debt. And so we used that money to fund him and it was very successful. We actually have saved a soul, you might say, because his life was, was shot. Yeah. And uh, we turned him around. We remade him. We taught him how to talk on the phone. We taught him how to shake hands. You know, we just went to the most basic things and polished him. And it wasn't a polished turd. He came turned out to be a polished apple. And, uh, and uh, he interviewed in a place where I have connections, which is uh, Buffalo, University of Buffalo Med School. And he's started there and he's just doing great. And we, we actually saved us all. That's fantastic. I met him. Yeah, you met uh, Hassan. Remember? And, and uh, yeah, and he uh, did so much for us. I did. You know, and he's just a wonderful, wonderful guy. And he's like a son to me now. You know, it's the first time that I've ever embraced someone that's a Muslim and uh, understood them. And we share a lot of things together. And I've never been a part of someone in that religion or someone as foreign as being in Pakistan. And so it's kind of amazing because we gave him, we gave him a, a garage apartment, and so he stayed there, and uh, we gave him uh, a salary and all of that, and just rem it's like Pygmalion. It was like My Fair Lady, except yeah. it's My Fair Pakistan. I love that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> unbelievable. And so what a great guy he's turned to. What a great contribution he'll be to me for medicine, and he I'm sure he'll be back to Tampa. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, it, I like the, the, your thoughts in your email, uh, Eric, about you know finding an executive director soon. I think that's important. Um, I would, I would love. I was going to be leaving town on Wednesday. I've had a couple of medical issues come up. Um, I actually had an accident on an all-terrain vehicle and tore the rotator cuffs in both of my shoulders. Oh, so, oh man. Um, I'm going to stay back from a water skiing trip that I had planned this week, oh, this week. So it's probably a good <laughs> judgment on your part. So how's that going? Do you yeah, have uh, you know, it's, do you have the medical help you need for that? Some what? Boy, do you have the medical help you need in that area? I, I do. Okay. I've I found Dr. Petrie here in Orange County, and uh, he's well known and. Very good. Just so we're scheduled for surgery um, on the 26th of, of September on just one arm. Well, that's great. Uh, and we can basically clear you because you had your CT scan here. And so I actually have developed with our... Oh, that's brilliant. We've actually developed with our colleagues uh, in Private Corps, we've developed a new program for minimizing the cardiovascular risk for people having orthopedic surgery, especially knee, hip, and shoulder. And so uh, it's, it's kind of amazing that we've actually been able to prevent significant complications that people would have had, which there's a 6.9% cardiovascular complication rate. And uh, these are bundled Medicare patients that uh, basically the, the hospitals and the doctors are paid a fixed amount, and we've been able to, to help them with that so much that our program is now being adopted by the Florida Orthopedic Institute, that's the largest private practice orthopedic group in the country. And so uh, that's something I want to talk to Dr. Robert uh, Braithwith about because it's, uh, it's something that is uh, very available now. And uh, and when you talk about saving a lot of money on a, on a bundled case that's involved with the government, you, people turn heads and uh, they, they, they really want this and we're making the program packageable. That's fantastic. You know, that really is. And they, just to get back to the, to the uh, orthopedic surgeon, they uh, they wanted me to have an EE EKG within six months, and I think ours was performed on uh, uh, February eighth or so, something yeah, so, like that. So that's current, um, and all that stuff will be very useful to know that you don't have any coronary disease, 
and you know that uh, basically I'm I'm a risk predictor. I actually have my own risk score now, called the Tampa Bay Risk Score, and uh, I can show that to you after the meeting because we've we've gotten this down to being a science in uh, preventing the 6.9 percent complication rate. That's fantastic. Sounds like you and Bob need to talk. Um, and I'd be happy to um, either give Dr. Petrie's office your information so they can get the screening um, or the clearance and or the other way around. Yeah, I'll take care of that. It's Dr. What's Dr. Petrie's, uh, how you spell his name? P, let's see. I've got it right here. Or do I? P-E-T-R-I-E. -E. And what's his first name? Oh, that's a good question. Well, we'll, we'll look see. up Petrie Orthopedics, and we'll take care of that. He's in the New, Newport Orthopedic Okay, Institute. Newport. Okay, we'll take care of that Newport. on Monday. It's, it's a oh, done that's deal. that's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I got it covered. Well, um, are there any other folks that you have involved with, the, with this um, – this action you've got going on right now. I know these summits have been going on for a while, and it sounds like you've been able to just get those organized and basically self-pay. Um, from what I'm gathering, you're not looking for necessarily any research to, to be done. Uh, maybe you are through funding, um, but mostly you're looking for uh, spreading the word and, and building an organization that can sustain uh, membership drives and or uh, membership um, maintenance, if you will. Um, yeah, that I sounds think, to me like your first steps. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I agree with all that. The uh, that's the the critical piece is to just have a, an organization that can sustain itself. But the you know clearly the vision includes doing uh, active research together with you know an international representation, and I think that the most reliable way to do that and get started and to really learn from each other is to have an organized registry and I think that you know I would absolutely want to put that on our highest priority and uh, but you know it's very hard to get medical funding uh, you know approved if you try to go through the government then that's it's like a hopeless case and then right. you know if you go to a particular sponsor the only way that you can really get them to pony up is if you ask a specific question for their particular drug and that's that's exactly. you know in, in our situation yeah it's much it's much broader than that it's much broader than a particular drug or anything it's more about uh really improving patient care is is the is the essence yeah yeah, I, I get it. And I, you know, I guess the old adage, follow the money, uh, is still in play with, uh, in the medical world. I'm sure it is. In fact, it probably is more in play now than ever because of, you know, whatever. But um, some, some way or another, we have to form up a story that is uh, engaging and that represents a real benefit to the folks that will be involved in and maybe that even includes um, their bank book, you know, in terms of being able to provide services um, or just saving lives is maybe enough. But, um, you know, I recognize that, um, and I don't have any problem with people making money at all. In fact, I like it when people can make money and, and, and then, you know, provide an excellent service in exchange. That's the kind of thing that I love. But. So anyway, I think all of those questions need to be asked and answered. Uh, there's a ton more that I would love to just think about. And, um, you know, I, I, maybe it's, it's time uh, as we get closer to getting an executive, um, uh, you know, someone who can run this thing, um, start over with a sort of a business plan, if you will, and put all these pieces together that you have and see where the gaps are. Uh, find people to fill those gaps if that's needed, especially on the tech side, and uh, you know, form up a a, a plan, um, a project plan that 
it has time sets a timeline set to it and uh, put our feet to the fire and off we go um, that would be my my sense of things as I look at this right now and I'd be more than willing to, to help that process go along super now I think that's I think that's an outstanding suggestion I would ask you know is there somebody that you've worked with before or that uh, you know that we could you know go back and forth with if we were develop trying to develop a, a business plan you know I mean I can think of things really from a medical side but I would want to be able to you know bounce those frequently off somebody that maybe has a different viewpoint and uh, is there somebody that you can think of that would be willing to sort of engage in that kind of conversation or, or you know, communication via email or whatever? Yeah, you know, my first thought would be Bob Braithwaite and or one of his lieutenants um, that that he might want to be, you know, engaged with this. I know mean, he's a busy man, but he might well have someone who has a business mind that would want to be involved and also knows the the, at least the hospital administration side of it and then the medical side of it to some degree as well. Um, so I would think of Bob first and maybe his suggestions on who that could be. Um, as far as um, really liaisoning, liaisoning with you and, and sharing emails and, and moving forward, um, I, again, I would be happy to be CC'd in on that. Um, and I've developed a business plan or two in my day. Um, <laughs> I just think yeah. that's paramount. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, I'm sure you have. I didn't mean to suggest that that you couldn't do it, but I figured no, no, no. you got you got some big things on your plate. I know you're going to go hide out in Africa somewhere, so you know I know that that's uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's coming up, and uh, so I'm going in for a cortisone shot on Tuesday to see if I can make it to Africa. <laughs> but I'll I'll make it. Uh, I'm sure you but, will. But no. You know, I think that, that that would be awesome if we could get uh, a dialogue going, and I'll, I'll you know, I'll uh, I'll re do uh, you know, uh, search my resources here to some degree. I've been in the tech world for about eighteen years, and before that, banking, and before that, long before that, I was a pharmaceutical drug rep for Glaxo. <laughs> you can oh, imagine. really? Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I worked eight years with Glaxo, and. Cool. So yeah, you know, so I know you know what I'm talking about, Dan. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's you know, for, for us it was the formulary committees, you know, and um, in hospitals. And if you couldn't get your drug on a formula, you know, passed by a formulary committee, you couldn't get certainly get it into any pharmacies. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't worth your time talking detailing doctors about your your drugs, but. Anyway, I've been out of that for a long time, and I don't even know what the process is anymore for communicating with these prescribing doctors that are still essential to, you know, pharmaceutical companies. But, but anyway, I think marketing is marketing. I really do. And the first thing you start with is who do you market to? What, do you, what is your market? What's their makeup? Then it's how do you get to that market? How do you communicate effectively with them without being a burden? And then third, how do you, how do you convince them? What's your story? And how do you compel them, really, to act? And that's what you try to do in any kind of marketing or sales situation is you want, you want to become irresistible and you want to compel them. And if you can do that, when you can do that, which will do, we'll do. We have, we have the product, we have the story, we have the technology, we have the bridge bites, all of that. So all we have to do now is still, um, that's, that's easier said than done, obviously, <laughs> but, but you can see how I get pretty animated with this stuff, but it's, this is really juicy for me. Well, and I think it's, it's really helpful, actually. I, I, I do believe that that's the way that we need to go, and I think that we need to get our story straight in our heads and then be able to communicate that story effectively, so yeah. I, I agree. I, I hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and it's all doable. It's all doable. One guy can't do it, and you need people down the hall, just like Eric said. Um, you know, for a while, until it becomes self-sustaining and it's bigger than what you maybe wanted it in the beginning, and it becomes a, a force of it on its own. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. looking for uh, cardio oncology in Orange County. I don't find any cardio oncology at Hoag, H O A G. I do find there's a there's a doctor no. by the name of Chris Champion from Moffitt. Do you know him? No, no, he was from no. MD Anderson. Chris Champion. Did you know him when he was? Yeah, there? he. I knew I knew him very well. He actually was a fellow when I was at UTMB in Galveston. He was a fellow there. Yes. And then uh, he he went to private practice for a bit, and then he came to MD Anderson when I was at MD Anderson. And then uh, at the point, sometime before I left MD, MD Anderson, he moved out to California. Uh, and I would, uh, I, I think it's fine to, curious, uh, does he lay claim to some cardio oncology there in Orange County? Yeah, it says uh, basically he was at MD Anderson in Houston, Texas, where he aided in the development of the cardio oncology program before moving to California, and he's a part of Pacific Cardiovascular Associates Medical Group. But basically, uh, I don't really see where there's a cardio-oncology program in California in Orange County. You know, there is none, yeah. even Hogue Hospital. So I could see where Dr. Braywath would really want us to work with him to help them develop that. And uh, Chris is the only sign yeah. of any any life, and I don't think he's doing that anymore. Well, I think it's that's why Farsan brought county. me to you. Yeah. Go ahead. It's unknown in your own county. Uh, I agree, and that's why uh, Farzan, you know, toddled me out there to Tampa that in the first of the year. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. funny. Uh, Dr. Rajput made a comment on the plane coming back, and he said, you know, Boyd, we could do this imaging. I said, well, then why didn't you? He said, it's, it's too much. We can't put it all together. So my question is, why couldn't they do it? Is it because of the software that you have that aggregates all that data? Is that the thing that's special? And those yeah, images that we looked at together, is that, is that the essence of the technology? Actually, it's a lot of things coming together, but it's such that basically we're going to, we have uh, patents, provisional patents that we're applying for uh, in terms of recognizing plaque that's going to lead to a heart attack soon. And we've gotten to the point now where we're predicting heart attacks, which nobody in the world has ever done that. And so it's pretty incredible. Like we had a patient that's going to go have his hip done and we predict he's going to have a heart attack. Uh, after he has his hip done, and we're exactly right about it, and we're waiting for him when he gets chest pain at home and calls us. Okay, wow. so it's it's pretty wow. incredible. Yeah. So we do would like to take this program to Hoag, and uh, if you could help us accomplish that, at least just get me connected, and uh, and I'll talk to uh, Robert, talk to Bob about that. And if you could send an email, I'd yeah, like to take it to Hogue because we think we have a lot of potential. And what we want to do is use my Sherlock program with uh, either IBM Watson or in Santa Monica, there's uh, another one called Merlin and uh, try to basically build up to 20,000 cases a day that we could post process with a computer program. And uh, that would wow. basically go to the medical record. Okay, and we're working with the HeartFlow group there in Palo Alto, so we have a lot of uh, California connections. So this is another thing that so, uh, that's very important to you and me, Boyd. Yep. Well, I have questions about the patents. I've been through the patent process, and I patented five business methods. And um, you know, the patent office sh uh, shined on us at one time, and then they they basically the clouds came over at one time. And it was basically when you talk business methods patents or methods patents in general, it's like we're doing what what can be done by hand or in other ways, but we're doing them in bulk because it's a computer. Those are kind of dicey. So um, anyway, I hope you've got good uh, intellectual property guys working with you and that they're steering you uh, correctly. Patents aren't expensive until you have to defend them.
Exactly. So yeah. So I liked when you get back when we are in London together, or when you get back to the. When do you get back to the West Coast? I'll be um, I'll be back on the tenth of September, and then of course I'm coming the next week to see you all. So I just have that week in between. So I may come out there and fly with you. Come out there a couple of days early or something, and fly out with you. And then fly back to California and then uh, hang out with Brett some, either in one direction or the other direction. Try to get him to go with me if he will. And uh, and so uh, so I'll, I'll probably I might uh, just keep me in touch on your plane trip and I'll probably come out there and you and I and Brett will fly out together. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be a lot that'd of be fun. fun. I'm taking that. Talk. Virgin, uh, yeah, I'm taking the night virgin flight. Yeah. So I can sleep. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do a good sleep too. <laughs> Great idea. Good deal. So this has been a great uh, exchange and uh, a great time for us to warm up. And so uh, I think the next thing is to embrace uh, the CEO of Hogue and get involved uh, somewhat with him and see if we can do that while you're gone and bring that forward. So when you come back, we'll be set. Will you have uh, email contact from Darkest Africa? Or are you going to go totally dark? Well, I don't know. Um, you know, the guy that is our guide there, we've been corresponding with, and he, he's in Africa now, and he said basically send all of the, the emails that we have through his assistant, which is stateside. So my assumption is we're going to be in uh, Tanzania and, and Zambia and uh, – uh, uh, Kenya. So, um, well, I tell you, Boyd, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, uh, send you a draft, uh, uh, business plan by the time you leave so that you can read it on the plane. And then if you can just have, have them send back, uh, any sort of thoughts you sketch out, uh, that would be tremendous. That would be terrific. That would be terrific. I would love to see that and, and give it some thought. I really would. Super. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get in touch with uh, Bob next week out there at Hoag. I'll send you his information uh, just as soon as, I, uh, as soon as I can get to it. That's great. Thank so. you so much. Uh, this has been a great session, and uh, we're, we're sure glad to have uh, someone who's got some savvy – on board, uh, and we see we can take this a long way with you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thanks for that compliment. I, I'm sure, I assume you're talking about Dan, but um, <laughs> no, 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 he wasn't. Think, uh, Dan is uh, he's got his fields of expertise, but uh, you know, I'm not sure that he's uh, you know no. basically going to be a finance guy. No. No, but he's I have enough to, trouble with my checking. Great areas of expertise, let me tell you. <laughs> we're, we're, I think we're all complimentary, the three of us. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds, it sounds to me like we are. I, I like it a lot. Uh, I really have enjoyed it, and I've enjoyed your your um, your thoughts and what what you have to offer is exciting. I, you know, I really want to be involved in impacting people's lives and saving lives. So it's a real uh, opportunity. And uh, I want to thank you for including me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And certainly, uh, uh, you know, have a safe trip when you go to Africa. But more importantly, I hope your injection goes really well on Tuesday. <laughs> They're doing it under uh, uh, ultrasound. They're doing it with ultrasound. Yeah. Perfect. So that sounds great. That so sounds I'll, get, I'll get that uh, information off to Dr. Petrie. That'll be my highest priority on Monday. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very, very much. We'll take and care of that. I appreciate it, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Just let me know whatever you need. What you know when we when you'd like to talk next. Uh, give me a call anytime. All in, right. In Tanzania or in Tanzania or in uh, Kenya. <laughs> Which one should you know, we call I, you? I'm thinking about I'm thinking about buying a sat phone, so maybe we'll be okay. Oh, that would be a great <laughs> idea. How how's your how about drums? Uh, we could try drums.
Yeah, I, I, the only thing I would say is, is if you get a sat phone and it's got a real clear signal and all that, just make sure that you look behind you and that there's not some big tiger coming up or whatever, a lion coming to eat you. Yeah, have you looked online? At the, they have some of these dangerous moments where a camera takes a picture and you look in the background and you say, oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. Not good. Yeah. Well, we, we are going to some fairly exotic down through the to the southern part of Africa and we, we stop at these uh, they say they're luxury uh, accommodations and then, then we go out by motor um, you know every day to some other part of the country so it should be pretty uh, exciting we're we're very excited about it so super we'll have a great trip for sure I don't think you'll be uh, worrying about it. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. You guys, have a great weekend. Thanks thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate it. What's that? No. I didn't hear that, Eric. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a million. Okay. Bye-bye.